So I, I came to OSU because of a recommendation from a, a fire marshal in Corpus Christi, Texas when I was working there, uh, going to college, community college, and he highly recommended this program. And once I looked at it, I thought it would be very interesting for me. And I came here and uh, I, I loved it almost immediately and uh, really made a lot of friends. The interesting thing about this program is that it has a very high out-of-state enrollment. Over 50% of our people come from somewhere else. And so everybody's forced to know, get to know everybody else. And uh, you make a lot of great friends. And uh, I've been very fortunate to have really fantastic job opportunities because of coming here. I'm proud to be a School of Fire Protection Safety alum. Part of our uh, profession is listening to people, listening to their stories, listening to why they did or, or made a certain action. And also a very important part of our, our uh, profession is writing. And um, uh, being a good writer and writing objectively is, is a really an important part of our program and that stayed with me and helped me in my career. So I always loved this program. This program I, I felt for me is the person that really determined my career path. And I have a special bond with the professors and, and the students that I came to OSU with. And it was just an enticing opportunity to come back and lead the program where I graduated in a program that had provided me so many opportunities. I actually thought I would become department head at some time in the future, maybe a, a, a long time. I didn't anticipate that I would actually get this job at such a young age, but, but that goes back to the actual program itself providing such a good foundation and allowing me to get this job at, at a younger age and come back to OSU. Some of the neatest things for me are uh, seeing our students grow. Um, I've had several students who have uh, gone on to do really well things, gone on to graduate school, and be getting to know them real well has been very rewarding for me. But the best memories uh, for me are meeting those who have come before me, have come to our program and done great things. One of them is John Norman. Uh, John Norman was the uh, World Trade Center attack. Uh, served as a World Trade Center attack search and rescue manager for the Fire Department of New York. And I've been, able to, been fortunate to become friends with him. And another one is Rixio Medina, who is uh, Vice President of Sitco Petroleum and on the U.S. Chemical Safety Board. And meet these people and learn from them and continue that tradition that makes this program special by handing, learning from them and then handing that uh, knowledge down to our students. I have uh, several high achievements that have occurred, and, and for me, uh, the first high achievement that I had was graduating from Oklahoma State University. It was a goal that I had set myself, for myself, and I'm really proud of that. The second was getting a PhD, and uh, you know, you question yourself as to whether you're capable of doing something like that, and, and I was uh, really a, a highlight of my life to finish. Um, uh, and most recently, I was honored with an appointment by the Secretary of Health and Human Service to serve on an advisory board for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And that goes back to a testament also of, of this program and, and the worldwide recognition of this program, uh, being department head and then re receiving that appointment. It's a great honor. It means we get a lot of students from all over the world. Uh, we, we have a high international student uh, population and then a lot of students from every state in the United States. Uh, we get a lot of students from California, New York, Illinois, uh, Texas, you name it, uh, we get students from there. So it does uh, bring a, a great amount of diversity to our program and really um, a great amount of experience and um, adds value to, to our program and, and the graduates and the people who hire our students. The Red Book is the first uh, organized fire training manual uh, in the United States. And the first Red Book was published I believe in 1934. But how that came about is that the insurance industry was experiencing large losses from fires. And they were uh, interested in, in tra training firefighters to uh, respond to and put out these fire f fires faster. And uh, some of the red books were things like the mathematics of firefighting and firefighting operations. Uh, um, in 1931, they called a Congress in uh, uh, Kansas City, uh, the different insurers and the different uh, fire chiefs associations in uh, Kansas and the surrounding states, which included Oklahoma. At the time, Oklahoma had a very progressive fire chief named Ray Pence and had a lot of support for this type of uh, um, organized fire training. And at that Congress, since uh, they had been um, interested in this type of organized fire training, uh, and Ray Pence was there, the Stillwater fire chief, uh, they decided that they would have this uh, next Congress in Stillwater. And Ray, Jeff Ray Pence was very good 
friends with uh, President Bennett, the president of Oklahoma State University at the time. And so with all those things happening, then Oklahoma A&M University then became uh, the, essentially the central hub of fire service training materials in the United States. And now uh, Oklahoma State University Fire Protection Publications and the International Fire Service Training Association are the largest publisher of fire service training materials in the world. And all those organizations are here on the LSU campus. So the Red Book is no longer read. Um, it did, the Red Book, um, the first Red Book was read, and for many years the Red Books were red in color, and that's why they retain the name Red Books. People still call them the Red Books, but the the how they change is that the the science and evolution of firefighting has changed. The equipment has changed, the technology has changed, and and so now what's published is the uh, firefighting the essentials handbooks, which are the essential knowledge that firefighters need to know in the field. Uh, to become a firefighter, and so that's a, now a volume set, and um, and they publish those, and it's uh, widely distributed across the world. So for our 75th anniversary, which is uh, in the fall of 2012, we have a, a student and alumni reunion planned and 75th anniversary celebration. And we're going to bring in um, some of our uh, well-known alumni and also um, keynote speakers who will uh, speak to faculty and students about the history of the program and their knowledge of Oklahoma State University and how that has affected not only their lives but their profession. There's at least one thing and it's what, we, what was back then called the mathematics of firefighting. And uh, that involved uh, essentially moving water to the fire and uh, providing enough water um, hydraulically and hydro doing hydraulic calculations to get the water to the fire. We still do that albeit it's separate into several different classes as, as sprinklers have become more common in buildings and, and um, uh, essentially the science and, and the field of fire protection has advanced considerably. But we still do teach those same principles uh, here today that we did 75 years ago. So as the, fire, as the field of fire protection, safety, and industrial hygiene and occupational health advances, um, we're required then to uh, respond to that need to better educate our students on those advances. And that's going to lead us to a graduate program in the School of Fire Protection and Safety that will uh, build on the undergraduate and also allow students from other degree programs to come to the university and, and get the, master, the School of Fire Protection and Safety degree uh, at the master's, and, master's level. The School of Fire Protection and Safety has a major, an amazing history and lots of tradition. Uh, it gives to be good in fire, to be a, a really grounded and, and um, exceptional professional in fire protection and safety, you have to be good at three things. You have to have a good grounding in history, why things were done, how things happened, so that you can prevent those in the future. You have to be good at dealing with people, and you have to be technically competent. I think here at OSU, with our traditions and our history and uh, the way the program is set up, students get all those three. And with bringing people in from all over the country and all over the world, students become almost forced to interact with people that, from different areas, from different cultures, and that helps them in their careers in the future. In addition, students here can choose from a variety of job options uh, with very good starting salaries in fire protection, uh, working for a consulting firm or industrial facility, uh, they can even become a fire marshal or a fire inspector for municipal fire departments. They can work in safety, which spans all the way from healthcare to the oil companies to, um, to, to even um, manufacturing and computer uh, chips. It, it, it spans the globe and even industrial hygiene, which is how things affect the human body um, in the workplace and how to prevent the human body from becoming ill. So, Students can choose in those areas to be where they want to become employed, and this provides them great flexibility. And in addition, if they choose one and they, they're not happy there, or they, they think they need to uh, change jobs, uh, that makes the education and the well-rounded um, um, knowledge they gain here allows them to do that fairly easily. So uh, in addition to that, they get to uh, spend time on the beautiful OSU campus and partake in all the uh, activities that would enhance the student experience. And so I would highly recommend students choose OSU uh, to pursue a degree in fire protection and safety.